Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You're gonna be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Hi there, my name's Timmy Joe. Make videos about computers on the internet. And if you maybe have not been here before, hit the subscribe button. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Do all that YouTube crap. Hit the like button, give me a thousand kisses. This is gonna be fun. I am known for putting things in really cold situations. And I'm not talking like LN2, that would be a cool thing. Everyone does LN2. I use the Canadian winter of minus 20 to 30 to 40 Celsius to get some extreme temperature overclocking. I've done it where I put a 7740X to a full custom loop in my garage, minus 20, and I got it to 5.6 gigahertz. Broke like 1260 or 70 in Cinebench or something stupid. Uh, you know, that was crazy. But uh, then I just put a, a Threadripper, uh, the 16 core 2950X, 20, yeah, outside, and uh, I put the actual whole computer outside, ran the cables through a window so I could be nice and toasty, because the first time I was in the garage, really cold with the system, which is just ridiculous. And uh, that worked out really well, but Threadripper is not really a good platform to be doing stuff like that with, and uh, I just got it to 4.4 gigahertz, but I did a really good sentiment score, but I had this cold boot bug where after a certain temperature, it wouldn't boot, I had to bring it in, warm it up a bit, then it would go out and it would turn on, it would work for a little while, then it would stop again. So this time, I have the ultimate heater box. This is uh, an AMD FX system. It is an FX 9590, the hottest CPU there is, uh, and we're gonna try and break 5.5 gigahertz. And Cinebench stable, and I wanna get a thousand in Cinebench. <laughs> so how are we gonna do it? Huh? Well, we're not just gonna put the computer out of, outside this time and run you know, this and that and the other thing. I'm gonna make a stable box. That's what this comes in for, haha. <laughs> so we're gonna build a computer inside here. I was actually gonna put the whole test bench in there, but it doesn't fit. I thought I measured it right, and it was one of the biggest toes there was that had uh, a rubber seal around the top of it. So I wanna try and keep the coal inside it and uh, without like duct taping it closed. But this window here, it opens at the top uh, and the bottom uh, so I can in, inlet from the top, outlet from the bottom, or you know, some, we'll figure it out as we go. And I'm gonna run the dryer tube up the top and it'll exit out the bottom or something like that. And uh, it'll run into the box with, I have these crazy DF Storm Enermax fans. They blow out like 3,500 RPM. And it's supposed to get to like, Minus 35 this weekend at some point, probably more in the nighttime, but as soon as the sun goes down here, it gets stupid cold when it's like that. So I'm in Northern Ontario. We're gonna make a box of coolness that we can freaking fry a CPU in and you're gonna come along for the ride. So let's do one of those things where I make a crazy, put together the box together with music and then We'll start some testing, and the awesome thing is, is I'm just gonna run a really long power cord, you know, run the HDMI out, I'll have a wireless keyboard and mouse, and uh, we'll build the computer inside of here, and uh, we'll turn these fans on, and once it gets like, as cold as possible, I've got a temperature meter that my buddy Aaron lent me with a pot, well, I'll take the temperature meter out if I can get it out. I'll be able to run this outside, see when it's at maximum low temperature, and then we will be able to get this thing to like, I'm hoping like minus, over uh, under minus 30, does that make sense? And see if we can get the FX9590 to just go stupid crazy. I'm hoping this works out. The motherboard I have seems to be pretty good. VRMs aren't the hate isn't the greatest for overclocking on it, but it's gonna be stupid cold anyways. With an Oshtua NHT15, every time I've done this, I've used a liquid cooler. I think a big air cooler is gonna make, make way more sense. I'm gonna put the inlet so it blows right through the, the CPU cooler. <laughs> We're gonna have a lot of fun, so stick around. Dryer hose time.
the box is created. That is so awesome. So they, this thing is just a, a marvel of engineering. No one's ever thought of this, although I'm, probably you could YouTube it and somebody has. Uh, at least I've seen a dryer vent go into a computer case from outside before. So it's not that cold out today. It's only like minus, you know, 12 outside Celsius. But starting tomorrow, uh, a low of minus 21 during the day and up to minus 27 or something like that. And then even minus 31 on Sunday. So the box, I'm going to put the motherboard in it. Uh, I'm keeping everything outside to uh, keep the temperatures as cold as possible. So I will have the SSD, the hard drive, the, uh, even like I, I actually put this little box here so I can control the speed uh, of my, uh, my fans. And there's a temperature sensor. So I put a little hole in the side. It's insulated uh, to a degree, like it's not perfect obviously, because there's a lot of exposed plastic. I'm not worried about it being that crazy, but I'm gonna fire it up for the first time and see how cold we can get the box with the crazy fans. So come along for the ride. I will put this aboosh here. So here we go, turning it on. And uh, yeah, there we go. Boof! Yeah, and it's not even that loud. It wasn't, it's loud. Those fans are here, watch. Now they're both on full blast. <laughs> minus eight, minus 10. This works really fast. <laughs> awesome. Minus 12. So we're getting a pretty good temperature off the hop here. And it's, you know, it's minus 12 outside. So instantly the box is transformed to whatever the outside temperature is. So let's get to do it. Let's do some overclocking. <laughs> this is awesome. All right, guys, here it is. very chilly and it's not even cold out yet that's an FX 8350 and uh, yeah we're running at 5.22 gigahertz we'll see will it complete it's only like minus 12 or 8 out right now it's supposed to get down to minus 31 on the weekend and uh, yeah I've tuned her all up Got this uh, 990 Asus motherboard working half decently. Got a pretty damn good overclock going. Don't worry, I got the affinity or the uh, task manager priority set to high or whatever, not real time, but high, because I'm worried that it's, it's going to crash. And I'd rather know that it's you know it still moves once in a while. Let's see, 825. I got to run Windows 7 on this too because. Windows 10 is garbage for doing stuff like this. Oh, 822. Just a little sneak preview of what you're going to see with the ice box. Coming to a Timmy Joe PC tech near you. How's it going, bros? It's Timmy Joe. We're here. And it's the morning of Saturday. And uh, as you can tell by my little outside temperature meter, it is minus 27 degrade Celsius. Degrade. And, uh... Yeah, it's it's 20 degrees in here, which is good. And I have the box open because I've been having a world of problems because this Asus board, which is a 990 chipset, but it is the um, M5A99X, which is probably more of a consumer motherboard. And it's, it's definitely not. It's got blue PCIe slots. It's not meant for gaming. It's not meant for what I'm doing at all. But it's the one I bought on Kijiji for $80 with an 8350. I also have an 8350 in here because this piece of junk, 9590, it just it has completely random weird issues. It'll work great for an hour and then it'll shut off and then it'll turn back on and it'll blue screen and then you turn it back on again, you know, whether it's overclocked or not. So we're just not even gonna mess with this. So I've already done a lot of work uh, to get this thing to 5.2 gigahertz yesterday. And I was having a lot more success yesterday when the temperatures outside were minus uh, like 12. And I thought, ha ha, you know, 27 outside. It's a morning, family's up. Let's go and uh, get the box go in there. And uh, it will do a cold boot issue where it, uh, if I blast the fans and really make this thing cold, uh, it, it just 
doesn't like it at all. The motherboard temperature, I assume, goes below zero, and when that happens, it thinks the motherboard temperature has been uh, is wrong or is, is malfunctioning, and then the system will shut itself off. I can turn it back on and whatever, and then I'll open the box for a few minutes, and then it'll turn back on properly. So where we're at right now is I have like the the, the air pushing over the with the box open and uh, let's go over to the computer and we'll see we're booted up and we're stable at uh 5.27 gigahertz on this 8150 which is pretty sweet and i've actually uh been successful at running uh cinebench uh, no, no problems at like 5.2 gigahertz and getting about an 820 score. Uh, we'll see if we can show it down here to all the way down. A Intel 8 core and well, I got 800 in there anyways. So I have it at 1.6 volts right now, 64 volts right now. And as you can see the temperature on the package is zero. Let's put the box open because I have like basically an airflow of a really cold air through the NHD 15 and then it goes out right out the tube. So it's not even making the room cold with the, the box open. As soon as I close the box, things get way too cold. So this is a stupid idea. I think I'm maybe another motherboard would help like a better motherboard that doesn't have cold boot issues or an ln2 mode uh, i'm thinking specifically like a gigabyte board or an evga board uh because i know asus has this problem where it's like hey i'm freaking out because the temperatures are too low so let's see if we can run cinebench at 5.27 gigahertz <laughs> And I actually meant to put Windows 7, oh, you see, and it gets stuck. A anyways, I'll, let, I'm gonna play around with it a bit and we'll see how high I can get with this box idea. But I think ultimately I shouldn't have put my efforts towards the box. Putting the motherboard in the cold is not a good idea. What I should have done was put uh, a liquid cooling rad outside, like my big fat three hunkin' 60 with a push pull, hung that out the window and made sure like, a, like the fluid can take the cold. Like it's, uh, you know, I have to put minus 40 antifreeze in it or something like that. And then, uh, but that, then you introduce moisture and it shut itself off. <laughs> Yeah, because moisture, uh, I didn't think would be a problem in this situation because it's blowing cold, dry air. When the when you get down to mi sub minus 20, the air gets very, very dry. And uh, you don't have to worry about moisture if the whole thing is cold. But as soon as I put a rat outside and put a block there and I'm blasting minus 40 water on the CPU block, temperature like the, the block is going to accumulate uh, moisture around it. So I'm gonna try and get like, I was hoping to get to 5.5 gigahertz. I'm gonna try and get something going here and then I'll come back when I have some actual results because this has been lackluster at best. Great idea, Jimmy Joe! One eternity later. Well. I'm, uh, I'm done. <sighs> this it was a fun experiment while it lasted, but it doesn't work. I, I botched it. Another botched job from Jimmy Joe. So, um, yeah, I, I apologize, but this is a stupid idea. It just really is. And I'm not going to keep messing around with it because it just doesn't work. So, theoretically, if it's minus 10 out, the box is okay, okay? Getting a uh, FX 8150 to run Cinebench at 5.2 gigahertz. Here I'm throwing it up on the screen. Uh, a Cinebench result of, I think it was 820 or 822. That's, that's not bad, but it actually beats my record. I did this sort of experiment before with a uh, freezer uh, when I was first getting into PC YouTube and and uh, I put an 80, actually with the worst chipset and everything, an 8350 in a, a freezer. And I got it to hardware validate in CPU-Z at 5.5 gigahertz, which, I mean, who cares about that? That's not really, I, I'm sure I could get this thing to post at 5.5 gigahertz. That's not a big deal. Uh, but actually getting the CPU to do work is another thing. So. A couple things that might make this better is a motherboard that's made to do LN2 and stuff like that. But I'm just 
the junker guy that goes on Kijiji that buys the stuff and things. And to put proper expensive hardware in here, it's not really my big game right now. I might try this experiment another time. But uh, in the end, it's a stupid idea because motherboards aren't designed to be sub-zero. And when you introduce a you know, minus 30 environment on the motherboard itself, things start getting really wonky. So it was fun while it lasted, but it was a stupid idea in general. But I'm not going to let this get me down. I am definitely going to be taking this stuff. And I know I shouldn't. Yeah, anyways. I've got plans to run a rad outside by the end of the weekend uh, and see if I can't get the CPU temperature much lower with the same, you know, whatever, and do a little bit better. Uh, so putting uh, that big fat rad outside with a push pull on it, running the tubes in here, and uh, you know then you know the the, the VRM and the motherboard's not going to be minus thirty, you know, and it will start better. And then uh, it's only a six plus two phase VRM on this thing, so it's not a very good motherboard to be doing this. But I want to at least go a little further than I did, so I'll see if I can't get that rolling by the uh, end of the cold snap here. But I thank you very much for coming along for my ride. I mean, I put effort in, didn't I? I built the box of emotions. And is it ever a box of emotions? And uh, it just doesn't work. Now, I could also try this with another motherboard, another thing uh, later on. Uh, I'm sure we'll have another day or two where it's really cold outside. But it seems like it even works better when it's like minus 10 to minus 20 to do this uh so so we'll maybe try it with a different motherboard a different you know platform altogether if you have suggestions on some stuff uh you know if anyone out there has any cool overclocking old chipsets and stuff like that they're not uh using anymore uh email me me at timmyjoe.com i'm not made of money i just went to ces i just did all this stuff you know i'm living off of youtube so uh, spending a bunch of money on hardware, uh, I don't want to, <laughs> I, I, I will look on eBay, maybe I can find something. Anyways, uh, we've got some great content coming up though that I just bought, uh, the world's, the cheapest Vega 64, probably. I just bought, um, what else did I buy? An X99 chipset, uh, with a six core for very, very cheap and, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a load of fun here on Timmy Joe Channel 2019. Woo! Thanks for watching this terrible video. I'll see you guys in the next one.